By combining airborne laser technology, satellite mapping, and ground-based plot surveys, a team of researchers, including lead author Greg Asner of Carnegie's Department of Global Ecology, has produced the first large-scale, high-resolution estimates of carbon stocks in remote and fragile Madagascar. The group has shown that it is possible to map carbon stocks in rugged geographic regions, and that this type of carbon monitoring can be successfully employed to support conservation and climate change mitigation under the United Nations Initiative on Reduced Emissions from Deforestation and Degradation, or REDD. Madagascar has unique flora and fauna found nowhere else on Earth, but habitat destruction has transformed its tropical forest, leaving a patchwork of different landscapes. The rugged and remote terrain has made it very difficult to measure vegetation carbon content via traditional plot sample methods. Plots alone are impracticable for large sample sizes and often do not account for the great degree of landscape variability. The team, made up of scientists from the Carnegie Institution's Department of Global Ecology, Good Planet Foundation, and the Worldwide Fund for Nature, used the Carnegie Airborne Observatory, or CAO, to develop high-resolution estimates of carbon stored above ground across a wide range of ecological conditions. Their goal was to understand both human and environmental controls that shape the carbon landscape. The researchers found that humid mountain forests had the highest carbon densities, while there was less carbon in dry forests and in the lowlands with more human activity. Despite widespread human activity, they found that large-scale natural controls over carbon stocks were heavily driven by the type of terrain and vegetation cover. The researchers looked at two areas, one in the north and the other in the south, totaling 9,160 square miles, an area about the size of Vermont. In both regions, the carbon stocks reached their highest levels at mid-elevation. Deforestation and forest degradation greatly reduced standing carbon stocks. The scientists also found that carbon stocks in some areas containing secondary forest regrowth varied tremendously, but were consistently lower than an old-growth forest. These results show that scientists can obtain verifiable carbon assessments in remote tropical regions, which will be a boon not only to science and conservation, but to potential carbon offset programs. The work was published in the February 14, 2012 issue of Carbon Balance and Management. The Carnegie Urban Observatory flight campaign of Madagascar was supported by Air France, the Andrew Mellon Foundation, and the Carnegie Institution. The Carnegie Airborne Observatory is made possible by the Grantham Foundation for the Protection of the Environment, the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation, the W. M. Keck Foundation, and William Hurst III. The Carnegie Institution has had over 110 years of extraordinary discoveries. To continue this tradition, Carnegie scientists need your support. For more information about this and other cool science, visit our website at carnegiescience.edu. This is John Strom.